one. Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to big episode 57. It's not that big. <laughs> Some would say, as long as we keep it consistent, Jim, that's all the fans care about. That's what we're doing. Churning out that content. That's right. So, obviously, we were, we're not in person today, but we do want to keep bringing these to you guys, so that's why you see the two screens, and unfortunately, I can't hit Jim, so Jim, do everyone a favor at home and hit yourself. <clears throat> ah! <laughs> it sounded like a Jim hit. <laughs> <laughs> Soft and bitch-like. <laughs> that's right. So, what are you drinking tonight? I am actually breaking out a... From the Naked Brewing Company, which is out of Peddler's Village, PA, pretty close to us, the Stupid Naked Flanders. It comes... This was actually uh, batch number four, brewed in September of 2016, bottled in January of 2018. Where's your info, you son of a bitch? All right, it gives me no info. I bought it at the store because I drank it there and I liked it and I forget what it is. And it smells uh, like barrel-aged. Just to correct Jim, it's not... I mean, he might have went to if they had an extra shop in Peddler's Village, but they're based out of Southampton. Huntington Valley, PA, to be exact. So, yes, that's where I got it from. Oh, no, Naked Brewing. I was thinking of uh, fucking Free Will. That's it. Yeah, Naked's, like, right down from my house. Yeah, exactly. Or doxed, whatever. Nice. Um, Yeah, so tonight I'm finishing off the last of my Guinness Extra Stout. Got this for when uh, Connor came back with a vengeance. And it was uh, just about time to finish these off. So, keeping it simple tonight, Jim. Actually, in a lot of ways, this stupid naked reminds me of the uh, the dissonance that I love so much. Kind of amberish looking, nice little barrel aged wine kind of smell to it. Not a lot of lacing. It has potential. You mean better than when your typical Keystone? Actually, when it's... I'm done with this, I have a Coors Light ready to go. Of of course you do, Jim. I would expect nothing less out of you. Depending on how the nights goes, I might have to run and get another one. You got tea. So, all right, so what are we starting with? Are we doing the uh, the Patreon first? Um, yeah, you know what? Maybe we can start that as a uh, new tradition to make sure that we don't miss them. Yeah. So for, once again, www.patreon.com slash drink a beer play a game for as little as $2 a month you can ask a question that we will answer on this Power Hour podcast so have a few questions here and the first one comes from our buddy Gamer Astral and what is our favorite hangover remedy mmm okay so <clears throat> right off the bat if you have a really good hangover you're going to want to get something to hydrate yourself I always go with coconut water um, or Gatorade Either one. And as far as food, I always get in the mood for a stromboli. And everything stromboli, extra sauce, that's like almost guaranteed. I won't eat it until, you know, almost 3 or 4 p.m. But, like, that's usually every single bad hangover. That's like a must-have in my house. So that's usually – those are my my cures, if you will – Solid. Okay. First up, the best hangover cure is weed. But if you don't do that anymore, like I do, um, Jim, you're so cool. Yeah, I know. I don't do that crap anymore. I'm <laughs> I'm old and I'm a dad. What do you want from me? Uh, but yeah, my big go-to cure right now is good old Burger King. Go there, get a a double with bacon on it, or uh, and then medium fries, large diet coke. And actually, no, make it two burgers because you need that grease to really soak it all up. But for some reason, that uh, that double with uh, bacon on it really does the job. And, and thinking about, you know, I, I kind of missed the part where you said best. Definitely. He said want, favorite, be- but oh, okay, I threw both. Um, I was going to say, as far as if you honestly, if you want to get over your hangover fast, bite the dog that bitch or the fuck is that saying? Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. Honestly, start your morning with some kind of alcohol. Have uh, a Bloody Mary. Have Bloody something. Because 
the way your body works is as you're getting deprived, it really starts trying to pull it out of you. It fucks you up. So to take the edge off, have something to kind of mellow it back down. But that grease, like Jim's saying, grease and carbs, just sitting heavy, just absorb all that alcohol. And that's always an easy cure for me. Yeah, and actually a tip we got from our buddy Nerdy Nick, uh, he's all into powerlifting and shit like that, like bodybuilding. So he says... Actually taking multivitamins as you drink or when you're hungover, it like metabolizes the alcohol faster, like the zinc in it. So mm. I guess either the take zinc supplements or just take a multivite and that should help you out too. And you know, my my biggest trick, I know this isn't for hangover, but this is uh, to make sure you don't throw up. And I'm only speaking for me because I know most people are going to say it sounds disgusting. But for a very long time before a ho- really heavy night of doing lots of shots and drinking, I would always drink a bunch of chocolate milk and it would coat my stomach and I would never puke. But on the days I forgot to do that, I would almost always throw up. So... That was uh that was kind of my little trick because obviously the the base in the milk beats the acid in the alcohol is my guess but yeah that was my trick to not have as bad of a hangover or throw up beforehand. Yeah, and you know what? I love a good puke. Give me like two good vicious puke sessions. Give me two puke sessions, a nap, and then that Burger King meal afterwards, and I go from alcohol poisoning to back to normal by one o'clock in the afternoon. I go through I go through some hours of hell, don't get me wrong. Absolute hell. But I'm back to like ninety percent of my peak performance, which is, you know, a low bar to set anyway. So Jim, let's uh let's let's just back up that, that tale of lies you just spun. Incorrect. Um, number one, every single one of our friends can verify what I'm about to say. Jim somehow drank Okay, Mount. He wasn't the biggest drinker, but he got fucked up way worse than everyone. And his hangovers would last like 24 hours where he can't move from couches sometimes. And then I can't even tell you, like on two different bachelor parties, we'd be out. He would drink not more than everybody, about the same, but he couldn't get out of the bed for almost the entire next day and wouldn't be out until it's time for us to go out the following night. So be careful listening to Jim. He definitely uh, he makes it sound like he could boot and rally, which we, he never could. We didn't have my Burger King for that. It didn't make a difference, Jim. You we didn't have just, Burger King. You just don't handle your hangovers. That oh, way. no, and especially the older I get, it gets worse and worse. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm a bitch at this point, but... I'm just saying, I have a thing. I'm pretty locked in on a thing that works. <laughs> works is the key word with Jim. <laughs> so that's a good question, though. I like that. All right. Next one up uh, from our buddy G, G to the Next Level, former guest of this Power Hour podcast. What do you guys think is the most underrated first person shooter? For me, it's Criterion's Black on the PS2 and Xbox. Cheers. Hmm. Most underrated first person shooter. I'm going to let you start with this one, Jim. This one's, i got to think about that. I'm going to say with a kind of easy answer and just go with Titanfall 2 because it's a game that no one gave a chance to because Titanfall 1 wasn't the Call of Duty killer it was supposed to be. Excellent game, but, I mean, the fact that you can pick it up for like five bucks new at this point, everyone slept on it, and that's a crying shame because it's a great game. Yeah. Um, damn, that's a good answer. I wish I would have thought about that. So. Uh-huh. To not answer the same as Jim, but along the same lines, I'm actually going to go with Evolve. And if you followed our page for a long time, this is a game Jim and I like sunk our teeth into as soon as it came out. We were on like right on the bandwagon, and unfortunately, due to a lot of server issues and whatever else, uh, it just never got the popularity I think it deserved. Because at that time, that was one of the first asymmetrical games. You have a giant monster alien creature fighting against four hunters. And each one of the hunters has a very specific role. It was really, like, it was more groundbreaking than I think it gets credit for. And there's been a ton of asymmetrical games like that since, which have done much better. But uh, it is just a stupid fun game. And the amount of strategy and teamwork you have to use... I still love going back and playing it. Surprisingly, the servers are still up. Hmm. But, yeah, it just never went anywhere. So that's a game I still – I think uh, if you like the idea of becoming a giant monster and or, like, being a pack of hunters fight, fighting a monster, 
it's really for you. Yeah, that was a real victim of one bad PR before it came out because of all the microtransactions it had in there. And that was before mm-hmm. like microtransactions were like the buzzword of hate in the industry. And two, yeah, those servers were dog shit at launch. Like it was impossible to get a group of friends together to play together. And if you're making a multiplayer online game, you better make damn well sure those servers are working at launch. Or else your player <clears> base <throat> is gonna go boop. Yeah. Damn, now I wanna go play that game. We should we should play that game, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a that's a good topic. And those are you know, what, I'm gonna say Jim even had a good answer for Aha. once. I never get credit on this show. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Well, can you blame it, Jim? God damn it. Right. I bring the character to this show. God damn it. <laughs> you bring something. <laughs> I bring a lot of things. I bring a lot of stench. I bring a lot of charm. I bring a lot of lulls. You just keep calling everything that's unique charm at this point. And unique and charm doesn't necessarily mean good, Jim. Yeah, you never know. All right, moving on. <laughs> Game Whisperer Dean. What beer goes best with old sports titles? Hmm. Okay. Um, honestly, it's going to depend if you're talking, uh, if you're thinking about like 16 bit or NES titles. So I would suggest you go with something that's going to be more of a session beer because ideally you're playing with your friends. So you can be playing by yourself, but if you're sitting down playing the old Maddens, the old NHLs, or even Tecmo Super Bowl, um, you're going to want something a little lighter, not really anything higher than 6% because you're going to be chugging it fast in between plays and probably going through at least six of them. So I'd stay, say stay with either some type of amber or red lager or re- amber or red ale. Those two would be very easy for that style. Of course, you can go to like the gym style, which is light lagers, American lagers. They, they could go down easy enough. Um, but as far as other ales... Um, maybe like a brown ale that's a lower percentage. That's not going to sit too heavy in your stomach. But uh, those are kind of my go-tos. Any kind of session beer that you're not going to have to get too drunk and get messed up. Yeah, I mean, piggybacking off that, you can either go, for me, it's, the hell was that noise? It's either one of two extremes. You can either go like a real thick, heavy stout where you take a sip and then you can play for 10 minutes and still have the taste on your tongue. Or you Terrible can do it. idea. What? terrible idea or jim you, i'm the beer guy don't don't listen to jim never drink a stout while you're doing that yeah but, or you can do what i mostly do and just stick to some shitty pilsner and just pound them as you're playing yeah yeah bah, at the end of the bah. day just drink what you like <laughs> so yeah good question it's one that too bad he didn't ask it like three years ago when we were still plowing through all those old nes games that we could just pull like a specific brand out of our ass because we went through so many Exactly. So, if you want to see some beer recommendations, go check out our old catalog of videos. We were really good, Bergson. <laughs> some good videos there. There's a lot of videos. I'll say that. There, There is a lot of videos. There is strength in numbers. All right. So, what's next on that? All right. Actually, before I get going, the uh, Stupid Naked Flanders. It's. Uh, I think this was a gift and because it's a barrel aged sour, so it's right up my alley. So, whoever got this for me, they knew what they were doing. It's delicious. Did you mean to say barrel aged? Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, no, you said bout aged. No, I said barrel. No, you just slur your words. How many uh, times do we get comments now about how you say things, Jim? Look, just because we had one today and like three last week. and <laughs> Listen, just, it's not a problem. I'm very proud of my Philly heritage, all right? I don't even know if that's Philly. There's another word for it, but uh, we don't have to say it, so let's move on. What? Retarded? <laughs> Jim, I didn't say that. Shock value. <laughs> Give us views. All right. Lose our s- super contributors. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's move on to our first beer topic. Really, our only beer topic. And it's going to be goddamn header on the New York goddamn Post website. Oh. <laughs> It just keeps popping in and out. All right. Craft Beer Hater pulls gun on people outside of Brooklyn's other half brewing company. And this was actually suggested to us from our buddy Astral. So, thank you, Astral. And we're not just doing this because you pay us to answer your questions. Yeah. Um. So, let me see. Craft Beer Hater pulls gun on people outside Brooklyn's other half brewing company. All right. So, so the, long, the long and short of it, I take it you didn't look at it before, Brock? 
No, I'm looking at it right now. But here's the deal. Uh, what I did read really fast. Um, what makes him think specifically he was just a craft beer hater? Because he started yelling at the people for being craft beer douchebags, basically. Apparently, it's this like couple that was staying at like uh, Airbnb right next to the brewery. And I guess they were annoyed because they of all the noise coming from the line of people lined outside for a new beer. So they went out there at first and just, would, apparently they were drunk, shocker, and they started shit talking. And then they, like, came back and apparently at one point, like, I think the guy was holding a white claw and he threw it at the crowd or some shit like that. <laughs> and then later on, and then they started jabbing more back and forth with the people. And he's like, oh, what if I come back with a Glock? And then he did. Like, he didn't shoot anyone with it, but he, like, still, like, pulled it on people. So, of course, the crowd, so, of course, after that, he goes back to his Airbnb that the people can see from the line. So they call the cops, and he's, like, taken away in handcuffs 10 minutes later. But, yeah, the, uh, I guess the craft beer hate's still out there pretty strong. But here's the deal. It sounds to me that's more of someone who was just pissed off that he had a bunch of noise because he was at some Airbnb, a shitty Airbnb, and the location sucked. I don't know if it was an anti-craft beer. I think the fact that if you're – I'm sorry. I don't hate on people for what they drink, but if you're still drinking White Claws, what are you doing with your life? Like you – Unless you're a chick in the summertime, what are you doing? I, or your gym and you say they're refreshing, meaning... They are refreshing. Bought, they are a nice, you, delightful you, you, drink in the summer on a hot summer day. Yeah, see, Jim, as we've established, guys, Jim, if he pays money for something, he will justify why it's good no matter how terrible it is. So that, I don't necessarily think, I think it's just a coincidence. I think if that was a store for whatever else, this crazy asshole would have done that. But... uh yeah, man, that's a that's a real jackass move. Yeah, so apparently he threw like the white claw at a girl. So like, why are you throwing a beers at a girl? That's not cool. And he goes, well, how about I put a Glock in your mouth? So then five minutes later, he comes back with it in his hand. So I really hope the smart thing that the other half brewing company does is come up with a beer to commemorate this situation. Like, oh yeah, you know, how about I put a you know a gauche in your mouth or something? You know, like. Something to that effect. You got to no, play no, 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 no. What you do is you get a new beer and you call it Glock Line. There you go. It's a little, it's a little on the nose, Jim. Bry, with all the, the beers we have looked at, that is probably one of the more subtle ones. <laughs> I'm just saying they better do something. But yeah, that's fucking stupid, dude. Like people, and I've been around these kind of beer crowds. I mean, they're noisy, but unless they're having a party, it's just people talking at regular volume, just a whole bunch of them. Unless there's, like, an outside bar area that they were near. Like, I don't see why you get that pissed off, but obviously this guy has bigger problems and all that. Yeah, maybe it wasn't because of the noise. Apparently they were just drunk and mad that people were waiting in line for beers and being like, this is stupid. If anything, this is a clear sign that White Claws are dangerous and they need to be taken out of hands of people, Jim. Look, people say you can't get drunk off White Claw. Apparently you can. Well, we know you can, but that's not saying much. Why'd your Xbox just turn on? I don't know. <laughs> you, but God you can hear it, that Jim, from there, apparently. Did, did, did you program your Xbox to turn on when you say White Claw? Is that what <laughs> you've been calling your idea. goddamn Xbox? Look, Bri. Damn it, Jim. Bri, I am all about conserving my time and getting the most out of it. So if I say White Claw and my things just know to turn on, well, there you go. Son of a bitch. My Xbox, now, that, my butt plug, everything turns on when I say White Claw. That's when uh, the party starts. I'm done. I'm done. I'm it. That's it. (laughs) Son of a bitch. All right. So next topic. Damn it, Jim. What? I promised. You made a liar out of me. I promised last podcast there wouldn't be another list for quite a while. (laughs) And yet, it's going to go very fast. Comes to us from VentureBeat.com. It's a top 20 best-selling games of the decade in the U.S. So, Bri, if you would have to, I guess you've looked at it already, so I was going to say. if you're looking at it right now, but yeah, it's pretty much exactly what I would have guessed. Right. So, going through it real quick. Should we do bottom up? Like Classy Um, Gentlemen? Yeah. Okay. So, starting in at number, well... yeah, starting at number 20, we have Star Numbers Wars Battle, Bar- Battlefront two th- 2015, which kind of shocks me because 
I didn't think that game sold. I know it got shit reception and a lot of people bitched about it. I didn't think it sold that well. Oh, it got hated on, but you know what? Oh, apparently an internet, internet outrage mob doesn't result in the actual sales. What a shock. <laughs> so go ahead, number, Jim. Number 19, Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Not a shock. Yeah, that's, yeah. System seller. Uh, number 18, uh, Destiny, which that's not really a shock either. That, that had huge hype behind it. Yep. 17, Battlefield 4. But, Brian, I thought putting a woman with a cyborg arm in World War II would kill sales. Ah, <sighs> Jim. What did I say about that voice? Now, Do it now go ahead. It's charming now, and unique. Now go ahead and hit yourself. <laughs> what What was that? That was very bitch slappy. <laughs> that was a limp. That was a limp wristed. <laughs> actually, right. I was actually limp wristed as I did it. I, I, I know, Jim. We've shaken hands. So <laughs> coming in at number 16, Battlefield 1. Uh, of all the battlefields, that still kind of shocks me. I remember that one did look crazy good when it came out. But, uh, yeah, I would have thought Battlefield 3 would have been on this list and not that. I th- I think Battlefield 1 was after – I mean, we're talking about, like, the Battlefield 1 that was called 1 but came after 3. So I think it was still, like, yep. at, like, the height of the Battlefield, like, fuck Call of Duty love. Speaking yeah, of Call of Duty – Oops, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say it also did – it looked like like amazing for when it came out, so maybe that helped push it too. Mm-hmm. All right, number fifteen, Call of Duty: Infinite Warfare. Uh, a good one, one of the better of the later ones. Yeah, for sure. But on Shock. the downturn of people not you know loving Call of Duty as much, but still on here. Yep, number fourteen, Mario Kart Eight, which uh, of course. You're going to have that on here. And that's the last of the the Nintendo exclusive games on here. So it makes sense. I'm a little shocked. No Smash. Uh, but I guess it just hasn't been out long enough to compete with these other titles. Yeah, Smash sold a shitload, but I guess just not enough. Uh, number 13, Skyrim. It's on everything. Yeah. Probably, well, once again... What we're about to get into, really. And I mean, seeing an RPG this high of any type is still impressive. Yeah, even if it's the best one of all time. Who cares? All right, number 12, we got Modern Warfare 2019, uh, the most current one that's out. That's pretty damn impressive. And I will say, this game is... It it made me reappreciate Call of Duty games because us and all of our friends we had issues with a lot of call of duties they were going too much into like a halo style this brought it back and for it to be number 12 of the decade and only being out at this point since late september october or whatever that's 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 insane yeah it shows that the crowd really wanted that style back and i mean like black ops 4 brought back the not spacey kind of call of duty and then this one just did it right yeah, but that still had that crazy, like, specialist bullshit. Like, it, this just fully, as we always joke, Jim, this is boots on the ground. God. Vi- visceral. Damn it. <laughs> Every time we play. It's like snake in the grass. It's a goddamn that's, meme with us. That's right. All right, number, number 11. Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare. Probably one of the worst ones, but the definitely, first one of the Halo style. one of the worst. Yeah, this I'm shocked it still even made it. I mean, I guess everyone was just interested, bought it, but goddamn, that's still one of my most hated of the Call of Duty. Was it? What was it? Was it Infinite Warfare that came with uh, Modern Warfare Remastered? I'm kind of so- yeah. shocked at that so well, but I guess that's in the real doldrums of Call of Duty. Yeah, that's when people lost most faith, and I think at at one point people were probably buying Infinite Warfare just to get that Modern Warfare remake. To be honest, we kind of did. <clears throat> yeah so number 10 we got minecraft once again shocked it's this low but it was it was like free for a while right before kind of it was in like a beta that you could play uh, pay for and it like technically came out in 09 so this is the first list here is 2010 through 2019 so i don't know the logistics of it but i guess i think the official release date was 2010 so yeah it is it does seem low for me though but maybe just the ca- the dirty casual crowd isn't as, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know what I'm trying to say. No, I, I hear you. 
before I stumble over myself some more. But number nine, Call of Duty again, Black Ops Four. Makes sense. Really fun game. All Return the block. To form. Yeah, yeah. I I really like that game. So makes sense. Number eight, Call of Duty World War Two. I was looking forward to this game like a motherfucker, and I'm shocked it's higher than Black Ops Four yeah, or even too. Modern. Um, I do really like it, and I know a lot of people wanted to see Call of Duty go back to that. Um, but I don't know. I, I just would have thought that would have been lower, but still, I'm not shocked. It's on the list. Yeah, something was off a little bit about it. Like, we only really liked that one game mode, but the one where, like, you know, you kept taking turns trying to storm each, you know, the other player's bases and crap like that. Yep. But, yeah, I, or was that the first one to go back to Boots on the Ground, Visceral Warfare? That that was. That okay, so that's probably back. why it's sold so high, because everyone's like, oh, shit, it's back <clears throat> to the old style. That also had a crazy revamp for zombies mode and it made the zombies legit scare it wasn't goofy like all the other game zombie modes this one was like creepy and a story based zombies mode which was nice yep number seven red dead redemption 2 for all the shit it got i'm people, shocked and for all the shit it got and people saying it's boring it sold like hotcakes so yeah, yeah. i don't i'm not shocked number six we have call of duty ghost which that was that's was better. on st- that was on the start of the downturn yeah, I mean, I still, I had things I liked about it, but that was a rougher one, and that started the degrading of Call of Duty. Yeah, like, I know, I didn't hate Ghost, we played the shit out of it, it's just, yeah, yeah, like, of the old school before the Halo ones, it was the weakest of the batch. It yeah. was just kind of meh. Yeah. Number five, Call of Duty, shocker, Black Ops <laughs> 3. Great game. Yeah. Uh, nothing negative to say, I'm not shocked where it's at either. Probably one of the best of the Halo ones. Yeah. And then number four, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Oh, you're just going to take my spot. Cool, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I took it. <laughs> no, Modern Warfare 3, it's just because Modern 2. If Modern 2 was in this decade, that would have won. But that game just sold like crazy, especially when they started doing the swapping between Black Ops and Modern Warfare games. There was a crowd that loved Black Ops style and a crowd that loved Modern Warfare style. So that's really what you're seeing there. Um, number three, we have Black Ops 2, which is my probably my favorite of Black Ops because it introduced more game modes, insane kill streaks, and it was just it was just it was just it played the best of the Call of Duty games. I, I think two, it's the best made one. Yeah, for sure. Number two, we actually have Call of Duty Black Ops One. Which, that game, I mean, that revolutionized a lot because it combined uh, one of the best campaigns they made. It was a very unique, going back to like a Vietnam-style uh, scenario, which before it was just World War II or modern. No one ever tried to tackle that in between, and this game did it very well. It was really fun. Zombies mode was out of control because they had they added a lot more from uh, uh, World at War, so... I'm not shocked at all. It's position. Yep. And number one, GTA five. I said the staying power of this game is absolutely Unreal. incredible. It still maintains a $60 price tag. Maybe if you're lucky, you can get it for 40. If it like even Xbox one, the best I've ever seen it on sale for is like 20 bucks. It, it's a rock star of a game. Yeah, what do you call it? I uh, was like, oh, like, you know, this was before I had my kid, so I still had some semblance of time. I was like, oh, maybe I'll give this story of this a go. So I found it at a Goodwill. And I was like, oh, sweet, you know, five, ten bucks, something like that. Awesome. Get home and it's missing disc two. So still still not able to play it. Good job, Jim. So now I can still pay 60 bucks to play it on my Xbox One if I want to, which I'll never get around to. I, I mean, and the game is great. It deserves to be on there. It's just... Yeah. You know what? Actually, right below, it's the games from 2000 through 2009. So if you want to do a little time capsule real fast, because this is actually kind of fun to say. Let's just, instead of going one by one, I'd, I'd say in general, um, when well, I here, saw I'll, that. I'll, I'll blow through them real quick. Madden 06, Grand Theft Auto 4, Halo 2, Madden 09, Vice City, Madden 08, Halo 3, Madden 07, Rock Band 2, Guitar Hero 2, Duty World at War, GTA San Andreas, Mario Kart Wii, wow, at 8, that's really high up there, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Guitar Hero World Tour, We Play With Remote, 
Rock Band, We Fit, and Guitar Hero 3. What a time capsule. Well, what's amazing is, so obviously this last generate, this last decade was all just, it was Call of Duty through and through. This one, it still had Call of Duty very high in that list, but it was like, they could, that was the era of Guitar Hero and the, and the stupid, well, I'm calling it stupid, but the Wii stuff was selling because everyone's grandmom could play bowling with them. And I'm more shocked that, there wasn't even a single sports game in the past decade, like another Madden or NBA or any like any of the 2K games, because they still sell pretty damn good. So that's actually what's kind of interesting is that, yeah, they didn't touch anything, and even the Grand Theft Autos were still in there. So pretty shocking. Yeah, I mean, it's funny to see between two straight decades, if you're, G- if you're made by Rockstar or if you're a Call of Duty game, you're going to sell. Hey Amen. There's one thing you can't, no matter if you feel they're just recycling whatever, you can't deny they put out good products. Yep. Or if you're a Mario Kart game, because you always sneak in there too. Of course. So that's the, the like the kid market, essentially. Family. And that. <laughs> sure, Jim. Whatever you want to say. Family. <laughs> So let us know what you think, guys, if there's any shockers there. But I think we all figured, I mean, most people should know, Call of Duty's always going to sell like hotcakes. Yeah, it's actually, like, what do you think, or you, like, what's your biggest surprise to not see on there? Let's go with that route. I would Because I've got, I've got two. Um, let's see, of the past decade. Um, well, they got Legend of Zelda. I've got... Uh, um, there's no halos I would have competed with it. Honestly, there's not a, a sports. I'll just say a sports title. There's no other game that I really think, even if it gets sucked off by critics, I don't think I would have ever thought of as good as good selling as these games. All right, my two are. Five Nights at Freddy's, just anything from the series, but especially the first one. And just because of how much that took over YouTube for a couple years and the kid market. And then Overwatch. I thought for sure with how popular that is, that would squeak into the at least 20, but guess not. So, well, this is in the U.S. Keep that in mind. A lot of people play Overwatch, though. I know, but not not really. Like the U.S., it's like if if you were talking Asia – it would definitely be number one. Um, but Five Nights and Freddy's, I think the problem there is the price point was like five bucks, ten bucks for it. So even if they sold like crazy, it's not going to equate to a 60 buck game. I don't know if this is counting gross revenue or just actual sales of the game, though. My guess is gross revenue. Yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah, no. Overwatch, like I said, it's popular on youtube but it's not because i don't think it's because of the u.s crowd i think still the dominant first person shooter in u.s is call of duty yeah oh yeah by far so speaking of lists but this is not a year or decade in review kind of one this one's a little more interesting for our next topic okay so when you think japan what do you think of you think of weeb shit you think of rpgs think of gundams all that kind of crap anime what you don't really think of with the Japanese market a lot is first-person shooters. The way it dominated in the freaking U.S. You don't ever hear about any Japanese people talking about FPSs or even playing them. So, Kotaku had a list from 2017 where they did a poll. They got, like, barely any percentage of people turning out for it. But the list of the 20 most played and favorite RPG or first-person shooters and third-person from Japan. They just don't like those violent kind of games. So they had a point system for it. So, you know, whatever, you know, if we're poll winners got certain amounts of points. So figured we'd go down this list because it's definitely interesting to see what that side of the world thinks of these games. Yeah. <clears throat> so coming in at number 20, we have Doom, the original Doom. For They just have all the systems. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Number 19, Earth Defense Force 2. I know people love EDF, but I didn't think it would be that popular. Then again, yeah. small sample size, but still. Yeah, I'm still shocked. Uh, number 18, we got Gears of War, which not really that shocking. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. That wasn't Earth Defense Force. I just assumed it was. Simple 2000, Volume 81, Earth Defense 2. The fuck? I don't even know what that is, Jim. Huh. 
I don't. I'm just going to call it Honor. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, so 18, we have Gears of War. Once again, that was huge everywhere because of the style of game, and it was a selling point for 360, so it makes sense. Yep. Uh, 17, Resi 4. Cool. Cool to see it yeah. on there. 16, Maybe a little lower than Black- I think. Yeah. 16, we got Black Ops 3. Uh, yeah, that game is worldwide, and we just went over that. Yep. 15, Destiny. It was a big deal when would, it came out. I would imagine that being bigger in Japan than it was in the U.S. I'm actually shocked that's not higher. Yeah, I guess for its like looter elements and all that crap. <clears throat> uh, 14, I, I hate that they put this here, but Last of Us, because it's not really a shooter to me. But, okay. Yeah, I think that's one of those barely, uh, they're just like, we need another spot. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 13, original Black Ops. Once yeah. again, makes sense. Number 12, Left 4 Dead 2. Yes, Japan, you're pretty smart with that one on there. I'm surprised it's not higher considering how much Japan loves their horror culture. Yeah, but still, I'm just happy it's on there. Audition. Damn it, Jim. Number we 11. What? What? It's a movie. Famous. <laughs> 11, so Call Battle du- Royale. <laughs> 11, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare. Yep. Makes sense to see yep. it on here. Ten, there's your precious Titanfall two. They have which taste. I guess they they appreciate it more than the U.S. crowds. Hey, it's got big robots in it, so maybe it helped. <laughs> Number nine. Jim, what? Wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> Never mind, what guys. Say? <laughs> what vaguely <laughs> racist thing are you about to say, Brian? <laughs> what if they had an exclusive DLC to fight Godzilla? That would be smart. <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, Alliance of Valiant Arms. What is that? Don't know. Okay. I think Valiant Arms is an RPG series. Maybe it's an offshoot of it. I don't know. Moving on, Battlefield 1. It's popular here. Makes sense it's popular there. Number seven, Battlefield 4. Kind of funny to see them on the sales charts and the Japan charts back to back on both of them. Yeah, but the order reversed this time. Yeah, still funny to see. Uh, number six, Mag, massive action game. Didn't that I bomb here? It did. Which Wasn't is that one I'm, of those ones that was supposed to be one of those like huge, gigantic arena kind of shooter games? I'm just shocked it's on here. But I, but PS3 high. obviously was like really much bigger in Japan than it was here. So I guess it makes sense. Yep. And actually, Bry, speaking of fighting giant monsters, Earth Defense Force 4.1, <laughs> The Shadow of New Despair. <laughs> there you go, Jim. <laughs> I got nothing to say. What are you trying to, what are you implying here? Number you four. Fucked up all here. Number, number four. four shut eye. the fuck up, Jim. Number four is Goldeneye. And of course, I mean, they're all about N64s over there. So they, that's going to be that one of their favorites. That might be foreshadowing for later. It could be. Number three, Rainbow Six Siege. I'm kind of shocked to see that there. So that is a huge game. When you talk to YouTube community, um, I'm – not shocked. I'm just shocked how high it is in Japan because all the other realistic shooters are a little bit lower. <clears throat> but anyway, number two, we got Splatoon, of course. Makes sense. Um, and Jim, hey, look at that. It's almost like I said this earlier. Number one, Overwatch. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's huge in, in Asia, especially Japan. Makes sense. It's going to be their number one. I think they do have plenty of teams that – you know, play that. And that's going to be one of the games that's like the eSports in the Philly arena, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. <clears throat> it, this list pretty much makes sense. I actually expect it even more obscure. There was like three or four obscure title, titles, but... Uh, right, right, titles. Yeah. Races over there, boy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Took our jobs. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's an interesting list. But I can't ever trust a list that's only 300 people. Right. Like it's not a huge sample size. Like, they didn't even get a lot of turnout for it. So this is the turnout of what they got. Like, shooters are not really a big thing over there, like we said. I mean, that could be a list. Uh, 300 people could. You know how many gyms you could have on that, throwing off the bell curve and oh my God. giving terrible answer, You'd answers? You'd have a perfect list. You'd have a perfectly charming, unique list. God, I'd be so terrified if there's a bunch of like-minded people like you who answered gaming questions and people thought that was really how people think. Oh, that's terrifying. Uh, that would be so <laughs> charming. 
it would be like, oh, man, whoever did this, they don't know nothing about games. <laughs> Actually, Brian, speaking of things that Jim would probably say, our next topic comes to us from GoNintendo.com. Nintendo's late president, Hiroshi Yamaguchi, or Yamuchi, whatever, said N64 lost to the PS1 due to Japanese gamers wanting to play depressing games while being alone. <laughs> Oh. Holy shit. Uh, um, there were a lot of that, RPGs on the PS1, bro. I think he might be onto something. I mean, is it that or is it, you know, the N64 had 700 games, PS1 had triple that? Like, whatever no, the amount more? No, and- right. It's because j- apparently Japanese gamers are sad little babies who don't leave their house and play their little grindy RPGs that don't require any real gameplay or fun. <laughs> So they just sat in their little basements while playing them. But when I think N64, I think people like, yeah. Or I think of people like, you know, like Japanese chicks playing Mario Kart. Like like the goofy colors and all that shit. Like that right. is they, intrinsically played, much more Japanese. If they played more so. N64, more of them would have gotten laid because they would have left the house and talked to girls. And then the population crisis in Japan right now wouldn't be happening. The N64 <laughs> could have saved them, Brian. <laughs> Jim... How did the N64 help you with girls? <laughs> I wasn't in Japan, bro. <laughs> I was not in Japan. I could have used that back then. Oh, Jim. Desperately. How did, how did all those skills and knowing the little shortcuts in Koopa Beach help you pick up girls, Jim? It helps me now, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, did you know there's a land bridge just in case you missed a jump? There's a land uh, bridge that can help you. God damn it. But um, I, I just love, like... They go on to say how like Nintendo's more respectful of their competition now and stuff like that, but yeah, Yamauchi did not give a fuck. Yeah, it just sounds like uh, he just couldn't accept defeat. I mean, yeah, sounds kind of like a bitch, <laughs> if you ask me. And I mean, the PS1, it trounced everything that generation, so. Yeah, uh, some people actually like good sound. I know it's weird. Some people like one of the, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh I'm torn, but easily, arguably, one of the best controller layouts that has still maintained its general shape to this day for a reason. Like, yeah, especially when they added the sticks on there. Like, the DualShock is one of the best designs ever. Yeah, it's like it couldn't possibly have been any of that, and just had a much more heavy variety of games. Have actually good fighting games other than your smash brothers like couldn't be anything like that oh yeah i mean it had all the third party support in the world and it was just cheaper to produce for so like n64 shot itself in the foot in a thousand ways like we all know this but no it was clearly because people want to play depressing stuff lonely weebs brian lonely weebs that's the (laughs) that's the cause of all problems in the world is lonely weebs he was quite a character i'll say i'll give him that uh rest in peace rest in peace yamauchi san you're a man after my heart Trying to defend everything he can. Yep, he is like you. (laughs) (laughs) Using terrible logic. (laughs) Fantastic logic. Charming and unique logic, some could say. All right. So next up, uh, Jim gave us something from an eventhubs.com. It's the Evo 2020 lineup revealed. And I'll just run through them real quick. We got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Tekken 7, Street Fighter V, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Dragon Samurai Ball Fighters, Shodan. Brian. Call it right. Yeah, n- nobody cares. Um, Everyone cares. <laughs> Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Soul Calibur VI, Under Night and Birth, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So the big shock was the fact that they brought back Marvel vs. Capcom as like the um, invitational for all the eight winners to go fight each other. So that's more just like the you know the showy event at the end of the thing that they always have. But, yeah, yeah, Mortal Kombat got booted. Well, because they don't like good games, obviously. Or maybe because Mortal (laughs) Kombat 11 isn't that great of a game. Well, I won't deny that. Mortal Kombat 11 may not be great, but, you know, same deal. If they're able to go back to Marvel vs. Capcom 2, they can go back to, you know, Mortal Kombat 10 or 9. Uh, I don't know. I think they try to keep it more from the franchises, like the most, yeah, I mean, I I know that like, there's a bunch of people who are butthurt that the the Invitational game wasn't like melee or shit like that. So of course, Smash Ultimate has to be in there because it's the best Smash for yeah for for, for normal audiences who aren't fighter game dorks that would actually go and care about Evo. But 
I thought it was cool to see Marvel vs. Capcom 2 still be held in such high fun regard that they bring it back as, like, a special. Hey, look at this. Yeah, no, I, I kind of like that. I mean, um, it is crazy because I have no idea what the hell Under Night and Birth is. I have no idea what Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is. Un- Under Night that- apparently is, like, the new, like, um, one that people just really love. It's like in the fighting game community, and I think Grand Blue is like the next Blaze Blue in that series. I want to say so. I but guess it makes is sense. Samurai that's in there. Showdown, a new is that a new one? Yeah, that's the one that came out last year. Gotcha. Okay, I didn't. I haven't seen shit about that game. It kind of came and went. I think it came out as like a forty dollar title. Like it wasn't even like a full price release, but people like it from what I've seen. Hmm. Uh, it, it's kind of silly though as more the issues i had with mortal kombat 11 were more the characters the story and stuff the game plays fine i don't Apparently see why not. well i mean uh, maybe there's just not enough buzz around it either to keep it in there that's true yeah either way that's that, i do like that they threw uh marvel vs. capcom 2 in there all right so the next one, I the next topic up, it's one of the last ones of anything that I'd really prepped for this. So I was going to call it a gym rage, but I'm not really as much angry about it anymore. As it's like a question I want to put out there like to you and to our audience, like all 10 of them. So lately there's been a lot of like hoopla around either repros or re-releases or HD Kickstarter remasters of games that either no one really cared about or that aren't even that old and shit like that. So I want to go through a couple examples here. So, like, Metal Storm just got a repro. So they got... Castlemania Games got a license from IRAM. And Metal Storm's a platformer, action platformer from the NES days. So they went to IRAM, they got a license to make more carts. So they released, you know, pretty nice looking editions of it. But it's just kind of weird, because at the end of the day, it still almost seems to me like still just a repro cart. That you could probably buy on AliExpress. And, like, the quality's probably top-notch for what they did and shit like that. But it's still not the official Nintendo-licensed Iron-produced game from back in the day. So, it's always kind of weird to me to see full-priced re-releases of... And the hype around full-priced repros, basically, of, like, 30- to 40-year-old games. And going along that, like, right now there's a Kickstarter for a game called Jim Power, which is on the Amiga... So, right there, it's coming out to kind of a limited fan base, and a company went, they got the license to the old game, so they're making, they were going to originally make a port for the NES, but then they wound up uh, finding out that they had, you know, an unfinished ROM for the Genesis, so like, alright, we'll make a Genesis game. So they started also porting it for the Super NES, and the CD32 of all goddamn things, and the TurboGrafx CD, and... They're charging for the base level of just a game in a box and a manual, fifty bucks for a game that no one really played back then, no one's talked about for thirty years, but all of a sudden you look at your Twitter wall when they announced it and it was just line to line, oh my god, Jim Power is getting re released. So along that same line, we have the wonderful one oh one, which has a Kickstarter going on right now, which was a Wii U exclusive game by Platinum Games that sold like dog shits and i'll admit it like back in the day i heard nothing of any kind of buzz about this game but i log into twitter one day and facebook gaming groups and all of a sudden everyone's like i'm back in wonderful 101 i'm back in wonderful 101 for switch back in wonderful 101 and i'm just like why are you so go go buy the wii u copy for 20 bucks why are you getting excited for a game that's already hd that's getting a remaster like i just like even for a collector like me i don't get this concept or like the amount of hype around it so, I mean, I don't, I mean, the hype, okay, number one, hype online, Twitter hype, Facebook hype, it's complete bullshit. People are more or less doing that to get likes, to get this, to do that. It's not their true feelings. Cloud chasing? They're just trying, yeah, they're just like, oh man, that seems to be the hot thing. We can all get on the same group and maybe it earns me followers or likes or whatever. Like, you know, it's like people commenting on shit about the Oscars when none of us give two fucks about it unless you're someone who truly does, but we might still just throw a funny quip out there hoping it gets some traction. Right, gamers didn't rise up. Joker didn't win Best Picture. Gamers were supposed to rise up. I'm not even going to go there, Jim. But but the point is, like, 
I'm fine. You know what? I'm actually okay that these people want to do that. If they want to release repros at this kind of price, go ahead, do it. I don't think it's going to be a viable option. And the hope is you won't have jackasses willing to drop that kind of money. Like, let it fail. Let them have to liquidate and let them sell it cheap later on. Like, oh, Jim Power only already went well above its thing, and it still has three days left. And that's my point. Like, unfortunately, there is a market for these people. And when it comes to collectors, I mean, I still can't even – between you and me, I bust your balls. You are the collector. You like having the – you are especially get boners over complete, complete in box. You have how many goddamn different versions of River Raid when you've only played one maybe once? Like there's no real reason for you to have that many copies of a game that is novelty at best nowadays. And yet you still find the need, like if you can keep finding it, you're going to keep finding the most perfect condition and box. And you're probably going to spend money you probably shouldn't for it. Some people with certain games, you just want a physical copy. Um, I, I don't personally understand that because I'm of the type like uh, I play the games. I'm not trying to display my games. And I, I, I'm all for when people like having the displays. That's really cool. But, um, you know, if I can get a cheaper copy of the game to actually play and enjoy, that's cool. And maybe if there's a few games I hold in really high esteem, I'd be willing to pay a little more to have a, some kind of special version or, or a complete in box. But some people, they just the, – the hunt for the game is the thrill. It's not playing the game. It's not the quality of the game. It's saying I have a copy of this when – nobody else does or whatever like there's always weird reasons and it's just it, it cracks me up because people will continue to do that like if they turned around and did repros of all the nes games everyone like plenty of people would still play full price for all these games that you damn well know shouldn't sell for more than 10 bucks 15 bucks it's just the way it works yeah i mean it's just kind of funny because like like there was like a super special collector's edition of metal storm for instance that came with, like, a little toy figure that you'll never do anything with and a CD soundtrack that you'll never listen to. And for the price that people were paying for something like that, you could have bought the actual legit copy of Metal Storm from back in the day. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, even for, like, like I'm obviously the collector of the two of us as we talk about. Even for someone like me, I'm just like, yeah, but it's still not the actual game that came out back in the day. Like, it's cool. It's cool that there's, you know, a repro and a thing that you can play and shit like that, but... Yeah, but see, if you're doing it for if you're doing it for collector purposes, like it doesn't fit in the whole collector line. It's just maybe it's a weird subset. Maybe it's just for the people who want every single thing that can be associated with it. Like I think the coolest one out of all three of these would be Jim Power because it never came out before on any of these systems. So they're putting the legwork in to you know make it playable for all these different consoles and to give you your choice of it. But that's where I have an issue with what you just said because. You're being a bit of a game snob. Like, you're yeah. like that guy that's like, eh, hey, it's it, it. You're kind of doing the Mike Pate thing. Like, if you didn't beat it on the original, it's not real. Like, if people's collecting, who, like, unless they're trying to say, hey, I'm the only person with a legit full collection of the original actual titles, who gives a fuck? If they want to pass it off as, I just have a real copy, it's not the same as, like, um, when you have, like, uh, an original restored you know, 69 Chevelle versus the clone version. And it's not the legit car. Like there's a huge difference because what's going to happen is you get this game. It's going to sit on your shelf and who's really going to see it. Like, and who's going to question the legitimacy unless you're buying them, turning them around and saying, these are the originals. Like if there's some way to make sure that well, can't happen, which you can't with metal storm. Cause it came on a blue cartridge. So exactly. So Unless there's a fraud reason, I don't give two fuck. Like, and if you're a collector, honestly, unless you're anal like you, why would you care? Unless you're curating a collection just for value. Like, if you're doing it for that or historical accuracy or you're doing it to have a specific collection, then you really shouldn't care. Like, maybe you just want it to fill in your shelf space and you're not willing to pay whatever the price is for a real one. I don't know. I don't know the difference. Um, but. At the end of the day, who cares? And you need to stop being so anal about Jim. Oh yeah, I mean, look, we we all know I'm not afraid to be a hypocrite. All right, that that means absolutely nothing to me. But I don't know. It's just a, it's a thing that to me, like, it just seemed a little weird just for 
the hype machine around it, which, I don't know, because it's not like there haven't been repros of these things before, but, hey, if you want a thing that's, like, you know, semi-real licensed, you know, go for it. Why not? I mean, far be it for me to talk about people wasting their money here. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know what to say about that, Jim. Um, people always find ways to, su- I wouldn't say surprise me, disappoint me. The fact that someone would pay this money, uh, I think there's way much better. You waste money all the time when games are terrible and you still haven't got yourself a PS4. You're claiming you're going to get a PS5 and that time will come and go. And, you know, it's... People make decisions, Jim. And sometimes you just got to let them make the wrong ones. Oh, the PS5 will be had because I can play PS4. And then I'll have all the games. It'll be like when I bought a Wii U because then I can play with the Wii with it. Good decision making No, that's making not right why there. you bought the Good that's decision, just why. like you said, Bri. Good decision making right there. And yet you haven't played the Wii U in probably like three years because all you have is your Switch and there's no reason to play your Wii U. I played my Wii U last month. I don't buy it. Turning it on and being like, oh, okay, does this game work? Doesn't count as playing game, Jim. Incorrect. I I did my Yokoi Kids video for goddamn Kirby off the Wii U. So ha. That's stupid. Why would you not just use your Retron? Because I didn't have the Game Boy card of Kirby, but the Kirby game was on my Kirby collection on the Wii. So I put it off my Wii. Why don't you just have it on your Switch? Because they don't have the Kirby Game Boy game on the Switch, Brian. Why not? Because they don't have it on there yet. Because Nintendo is very lazy with bringing games to their Switch Online service. Which they pretty much stopped doing once they th- made people happy and threw some SNES games on there. All I wanted to hear was Nintendo fucked up, Jim. Yeah, they did. <laughs> look, if it, it, up? Look, <laughs> it, 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 look, if it wasn't, oh, boy. If it wasn't less than $2 a month, it would not be worth it. But under 2 bucks a month, please. I piss away more than 2 bucks a month every morning. Damn it, Jim. So, yeah, that uh, I want to hear what you guys think. If you have a strong opinion of this, um, and I get it if you're a hardcore collector and you you want it to be legitimate, but to me personally, especially titles like this, eh, it doesn't matter. And, and I still, I, I will always say, I don't care what hype is around any game. It's just bullshit hype when you see it online. Unless you're talking to someone that is a legit friend of yours and you know them fairly well and you can gauge a reaction, most people are just joining the crowd like, yeah, I'm for that. That's like if you're standing in a crowd and you all and you have you and a friend look up at a tree, you can get like 10 other people to just randomly look up at a tree with you for no reason. It is true. I think that's the biggest one with One for 101 just because like all the people who made the biggest hype about it were people who had a Wii U. And they probably didn't have it on the Wii U because no one cared about it back then. So, because no one liked the Wii U. <clears throat> I was talking about Wii U owners because it was an exclusive game. Yeah, because no one cared about the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, is Even true. their owners. How <laughs> dare you say the, the Wii U is like the system. It's kind of like. Oh, <laughs> uh, never mind. Well, go ahead, Brian. Let's hear it. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> Little bitch pussy boy. It, wa- it wasn't It wasn't properly for- formulated in my head, Jim, so I can't articulate it <laughs> <Okay>. correctly. <laughs> huh, look at me. I'm right. I'm not afraid to sound like a dum-dum like Jim does all the time. Look at me. I'm so professional. You mean I am afraid to sound like a dum-dum. You said I, I ain't afraid to sound like a dum-dum. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> By the way, we should uh, we should point out. I realize we never made an official video outlining this for everyone. Um, if you've already seen, well, I'm sure you have because of the millions of views. And don't bother checking the legitimacy of that. But uh, we reviewed Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, this month, we're actually going through and reviewing all of the Toe Jam and Earl games. So. Um, there's Toe Jam and Earl 2, which is on the actual on the Genesis still. Then the third one is on the original Xbox, and then the newest one is on the Switch. So well, it's on <laughs> everything, but I played it on the Switch. Okay, so the worst one. Cool. Um, Brian, actually, there's a version <laughs> that came with the game for the Sega Menacer that I can't play and record because I don't have a light gun and a CRT to play it on. Actually, I do have a CRT. I don't have the gun. See. Fucking up, Jim. Minigame. But we uh, 
you know, because we always do our theme months. And even when it's like le- when it was for Christmas and it, and our theme was just e- us giving each other games. For some reason, it helps focus us on a t- certain style of game and whatever. And Jim offered up Toe Jam and Earl, which somehow I know knowing Jim's brain, I knew it was going to be a situation like he was going to offer at one, at one point, especially being the Genesis dork that he is. Um yeah, so now we're going through this, these games, and I, I want us to do a recap, but I want to hear what you guys think we're going to say about these games before they come out. If you're listening to this and you like our reviews of Toe Jam and Earl, I want to see if you can uh, guess some of our thoughts or scores on the future games, if you've played any of them. Yeah, I, I will say that, yes, this was my idea, and in some cases I paid the price. <laughs> Jim, how come every time I leave a month up to you, it seems like they're not very good games. They're usually pretty weird. They are charming and, and interesting. And not a lot of people like them. Everyone likes Toe Jam and Earl. <laughs> Jim, why is it when I chose months like Mortal Kombat and Superman and Simpsons, seems like it hit like gangbusters and people liked them? Well, Brian, that was, that was four <laughs> years and 17 <laughs> algorithms ago, Brian. I wonder if there's a thing there. No, it's just good choices versus bad ones. <clears throat> Superman wasn't even your goddamn choice. It's because I won that drinking game. Uh, who who established the whole idea, Jim? Still wasn't your choice. That The choice was we're going to do Batman or Superman games. So there was just my choice. Look, Brian, we went I, through all the Resident Evil games five years ago. I'm sure they'd be doing just as well as the other videos. Man, Instead of pretty damn, flattering it like doing, 200, 300 piece. Uh, they're doing pretty damn good, Jim. I don't know if you check the numbers. <laughs> Some of them are. They're not. They're, once they start hitting the thousand and up, then I'll call them pretty good. Jim, let's just ask: How's your CDI games doing? <laughs> Dog shit. <laughs> right around that two fifty mark in views, right there, right where it deserves. Look, Brian, I, I thought I thought I was going to be better at a Hotel Mario. I'm surprised by how bad that did. You know, there's one of us here, Jim, that's not surprised. You know, you want to guess who that is? Well, maybe I should have reviewed it back in 2009 when AVGN was talking about it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, I wanted to throw out there. So Jim and I said we do have guests uh, lined up for future podcasts. But if there's anyone out there that you guys would like to see us talk with, uh, offer up names. Maybe we'll try and reach out. I think there's a lot of different personalities out there that Jim and I have kind of thrown around and spitballed and right now we have a few that are unlocked but i you know if there's anyone out there that you think would just be interesting just for us to talk to be sure just send us an email tweet us whatever um just get a message out to us and we'll we'll see if we can maybe even reach out to them because just like we do with our videos if there's a certain thing you guys would like to see we always try to accommodate the best we can because we don't have specific agendas when we do these things. And we're here just because we like connecting with different people and sharing our thoughts with you guys. Actually, Brian, I have a neoliberal fascist right-wing agenda at all times. <laughs> well, we know that. But the good thing is you're so inarticulate that it never comes through the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that's the advantage of mumbling your way through anything. You can see whatever you want. <laughs> and Jim, and when no, no one watches, no one cares. <laughs> and Jim, no one would ever look at you and take you serious, <laughs> as they should. No one should ever take what I say seriously. <laughs> if you ever base anything around my opinion, you are you, you're in trouble. I think even my two year old looks at me and just goes, "Shut up, you stupid idiot." That's that's a good choice. <laughs> she, she's a smart girl for it. She's already smarter than me. <laughs> So with that, guys, we thank you for oh, listening. Right before, oh, before, 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 go ahead. Let's talk about the beers. Oh yeah. So I'll go first. Obviously, you guys know my love of Guinness. Made videos about it. Talked about it. Uh, of the Guinness ones, um, I think I may prefer this over the original Guinness. It just does have that little bit of extra flavor. But either way, you, there's no Guinness you can really go wrong with. I'm going to be honest. So always recommend this yeah and for my beer um you know what i've talked ad nauseum before about how much i love that dissonant beer and this is really similar so i'm gonna have to take a drip to naked and uh 
stock up on some. Maybe it's because I let it sit for two years before I drank it that it tasted very similar to that style, but whatever it is, I really liked it. So if you're a fan of, you know, barrel-aged uh, sours, this is a good one to go with. Even though if you're not in Southeast PA, you're probably going to have a hard time finding it. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you once again for watching. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, comment below, hit like. And if you can, go over to iTunes. Make sure you rate, review us, and please subscribe. That will definitely help us keep moving this thing along. Look, I'm going to rip off, you know, Thought Cops and who are these podcasts. Leave us a five-star review if you want, and then trash us in the comments. Say whatever you want. We need that five-star review, though. That's the thing that goes towards the algorithm. <laughs> So, like I said, five stars and then bash away, please, for the love of God. So with that, guys, cheers. Cheers.